Yo, yo! How's it going, everyone? I'm in the uh, Lake Brunner area today. Just been doing a few weeks' work for my old boss up here and got a few days off, so I thought I'd try a day fly fishing. During the week when I've been working, my possum trap line has bypassed a little bush stream and there's a handy pool right by my trap line where I used to stop and have lunch and every single day there's been a good four or five pound fish feeding in the pool and it's a beautiful clear bush stream so um, I thought I'd take a poke further up I've just been to the pool where I used to see this trout every day and you wouldn't read about it the one day I came up here and he's not there so I'll carry on up I'm just coming to the first little gorge here and I don't know if I can get up through it or not I'll give it a go but if not I'll have to come back down and climb up through the bush jump on the dock track go up around the top and drop back into the river so yeah quite exciting small well, new new streams are always um, get gets the anticipation levels up. You never know what's there. There could be no trout, or every now and again you discover a little gem of a place. Hopefully, it's one of the latter. So I shall keep you updated. Well, started up on this dock track and just had a quick look at the GPS. Uh, she's a pretty steep deep gorge it looks like I'm gonna have to walk about three k's along this dock track before I can drop back into the river. She's not a good track either it's up and down like a yo-yo not very well marked and pretty rough but the promised land awaits hopefully you can hear the river below me there it's um certainly sounds quite gorgy and steep I hope it flattens out further up We'll see. I finally managed to get down to the river and you can see why they took the track around the gorge. Look at that deep dark abyss. It goes for about um, two k's downstream I think. First pull there. Haven't seen a fish in it yet, haven't had a proper look but just hoping there's fish above the gorge here. Be a shame if there isn't. Well, that's not very promising. Beautiful pool there, the first one after the gorge. And no fish in it whatsoever. I've sat here for 15 minutes and nothing showing. Oh, I think I'll jump back on the dock track and walk up a bit further. Have a look on some more pools and hope like heck there's some fish about. Go again. Hopefully you can hear me over the noise of that water. That noise should give you an idea of how steep this bloody river is. And unfortunately it's obviously too steep for trout to be up here. I've come right up to the swing bridge and checked out several pools above it. And there's not a fish to be seen anywhere. There's, um, I guess you'd call them almost mini waterfalls in between each pool. So yeah, obviously the trout can't make it up here. So this video might be lacking a bit in content, trout fishing wise anyway. So in the meantime, I'll leave you with a bit more B-roll. Ciao, ciao. Can you hear me tonight? I just keep falling down on my knees I've been fighting the darkest of wars All I'm asking is Lord give me peace Cause every time I try to make sense of it all I just feel like I'm close to the edge of the fall And I'm slowly drifting away Far away on the 
deepest of seas The world keeps spinning on I've forgotten just how to breathe And I keep running on When I should stand still Please be with me tonight I don't like this old game that I'm in How I want to start over again But I never know where to begin Cause all I really see is the edge of a head I am running on empty I hang by a thread when I really need to be still G'day, g'day. Well, that was about four hours of bush travel. I think it was about three k's up and three k's back. And all for not fish. It's a bit of a bummer, but that's all right. I don't consider any sort of trip like that a failure as such. I think going into a new area like that is real exciting, actually, despite seeing nothing. The anticipation and excitement of going into a new area is, um, I love it. It's especially satisfying when you do get results, um, especially when it's an area that you've kind of researched yourself, done a lot of reading and poured over maps and Google Earth. But most of all, you go into these areas usually only on a hunch. And like I say, when it pays off you find you know a river with with some good numbers of trout or a hunting spot with good numbers of animals it's really satisfying um, when you do find these spots because all the work you put into it is is all yours it's not like you've been told about it by someone else it's all your hard work and research and discovery so yeah that trip like I didn't see any didn't find any fish in the headwaters there. It's still a success, I reckon, for several reasons. One is I get to go on some country I've never been in before. Of course, there's the exercise factor. It's always good to get out in the hills. You don't have to see animals or catch fish to have a good time. And I've learnt something. There's no fish up in the headwaters of that stream. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, an area I haven't been into before. and She's all good. She's all good. I just come back down to the road bridge here. Every day this week there's been two fish um, right under the bridge, about four or five pounders. And once again, the day I come along with the fly rod and they're not there. Typical, eh? Anyway, so not much content in this video, I'm afraid. It could quite easily have been the other way. I could have discovered a a brand new fishery up there with good numbers and trophy trout. <laughs> That's what we wish for, isn't it? Anyway, we'll catch you later. Cheers. Oh, that was pretty cool. A last minute decision and stopped off at the Crooked River on the way home. And first two fish I saw, I hooked each one on the first cast. Awesome. Yippee, salvaged something from the day. one and the other one broke me off uh, around a rock so something salvaged from the day I forgot to tell you guys earlier on about a wee 
story a few weeks ago when I was over in Golden Bay chasing the kingfish with the fly rod. What that video didn't show was some dramas I had with gear, namely fly lines and backing. Before I came over I got a rod off my brother, he dug it out of the garage, hadn't been used for years, it was literally covered in dust and cobwebs. It was a nine foot six weight, so I pretty much only had lightweight trout gear. And when I got over there, I ran into Tony Entwistle and a young friend of his, John Gummer. And young John kindly lent me his saltwater fly reel, which was bloody nice of him. So yeah, I caught that kingfish on the first day, and then the second day I hooked another one. And it peeled, peeled me off, and the knot between the backing and the fly line ran out through the guides and promptly parted company. So I lost that fish, and not only that, I lost John's fly line. So I was up for the price of a new fly line there. And then on the third day, actually, I'll just run some B-roll for you. Some kingfish B-roll. I'm sure you'd rather watch that than my ugly face. So yeah, on the third day, um, Tony lent me one of his spare reels. And I went out on my own at Sparrow's Fart one morning and hooked into a fish. Uh, long story short, I played it for ages and went out, he pulled the line out, passed the fly line into the backing and as I was retrieving line, I saw the knot between the fly line and the backing come down through the guides. And they were joined with a double loop, loop to loop, and I noticed that one side of the loop in the backing had been cut so it was only hanging on by one side. <laughs> Thankfully I managed to get that fish in. So yeah, ended up going back to the motor camp and John and Tony were discussing possible causes of failure and in the end we put it down to the knot which they couldn't understand really because I mean they're top-notch fishermen and then their gear doesn't fail. And then we started um, and then we started looking at the rod I was using, that one <laughs> that my brother pulled out of the garage. And bugger me, if all the guides all the way up the rod had little notches worn into them through um, sheer use over the years, of course little notches create sharp edges. So that was the reason for those two lines getting damaged there. So a valuable lesson learned. Check your gear regularly. I'm pretty good at, um, in fact I'm very good at maintaining all my fishing and hunting gear but I neglected to check this rod that wasn't mine. So a valuable lesson learned there. Check all your gear, especially if it's someone else's or gear that you borrowed off someone else. So yeah, hard case. Anyway, We'll catch you later. Cheers.